Hi, this is Jonathan from Arcblog, and today I'm going to show you how to integrate the Arcblog iOS SDK into your iOS projects. So today I'm going to walk you through a tutorial to make a demo app called Register Accounts. In this app, we're going to um, basically have a table view and then um, load the list of um, this richest accounts uh, accounts on the uh, Bitcoin blockchain and the results are paged and we will have a um, table view that supports infinite scroll uh, as you can see we have a spinner here because it's actually the footer of the table view as you scroll down and then um, you will see uh, you will load more pages and more uh, uh, accounts and um, this is a this is right now a empty project that without uh, the integration with the R block and in the following uh, tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, integrate it and in order to get the data you will have to connect to the R block OCAP which is the open chain access protocol um, service and the service, the OCAP service, is a um, it's GraphQL based. So you have to write GraphQL queries um, to fetch data from the service, and also you will need to um, feed those data into your table view UI. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, the first step is to install the dependency. As you can see here, we are using uh, Cocoa Pods and add the pods of Arcblock SDK and Apollo, which is a, a dependency of the uh, Arcblock uh, SDK. And the second step is to basically write the query. And we have a OCAP playground for you to um, write and test your um, OCAP GraphQL queries. And after you play with it, you can save those queries into a playbook. Um, a playbook can contains multiple queries, and you can then generate codes um, for different platforms, um, including all the queries. So, let's see. Here is a playbook I I've already in created uh, for this pro demo project. Uh, it has a query called "Richest Account." with the paging um, supported and let's go ahead and create uh, generate the codes as you can see a, a an api dot swift file will be downloaded and let's go ahead and drag it into the x code let's take a look at the generated code as you can see we have a richest accounts query uh, and actually this is a wrapper of your query and you can see the operation definition is the query you actually wrote and in the reason why we need this wrapper is because we um, based on the uh, uh, OCAP schema and the query you write we can strongly define the type of the return data and the uh, request arguments this way, you won't get into any um, type error in runtime because it's all uh, declared in this uh, class. So uh, during compile time, if you write anything wrong, uh, you will get notified and you won't pass the uh, compile phase. And then um, let's go ahead and make use of this query class. So the first step you need to do is to basically create a uh, uh, ABSDK client. ABSDK client. And um, as you can see here in the readme, uh, I have a um, sample code. Uh, let's just paste it here as you can see um, 
in order to create a um, ABSDK client, you will have to pass a uh, ABSDK client configuration object. And for this object, um, you can um, specify many other configurations, but here we just going to specify the URL of the endpoint. So uh, HTTPS OCAP .io slash API slash etc and this is the um, um, endpoint for Bitcoin blockchain if you want to query other blockchains um, you can change the endpoint to Ethereum and whatsoever and also if you want to have offline cache you will need to specify a database URL in this case we just call it richest accounts SQL and then uh, this way the client uh, is actually uh, initiated and then we will use this client um, to create uh, to send um, our query and here in the view controller uh, we can make use of the ABS you can choose to actually you can choose to uh, send the request on your own and uh, man managing the pay pagination and the results and those logics on your own but uh, in the iOS SDK we, we provide some uh, classes for you to uh, easily quickly get started uh, which is the um, ABSDK data source uh, protocol and the related uh, implementations the uh, ABSDK data sources will help you to manage uh, data binding. For example, uh, if you can just subscribe to, um, it's just like a subscriber, you can subscribe to some piece of data um, from uh, the in the query result. And then once the data get updated, you have the uh, data source will notify you and you can uh, update the UI accordingly. This is especially useful uh, when you, we later on support support subscription. And um, as you can see in our query, we um, support paging. And there is also a pagination related uh, SDK, uh, ABSDK uh, data source, which is called ABSDK page array data source. And let's go ahead and see and, and create and see how it works. So um, let's create here and uh, here. So the code basically, what the code base would do is basically um, get the um, SDK client from the app delegates and then initiate a ABSDK page the array data source. <clears throat> um, in order to initiate it, you need several um, parameters. For example, pass the client to the data source and also the query, which is the which is the account query we just see in the generated codes, and also data source mapper, data source update handler, and page mapper. So let's go through it one by one. So the uh, data source mapper is the the um, closure that you specify which part of the query result you're interested in. For example, in one uh, query, different UI elements might be interested in different um, fields, for example. So uh, they can create different data sources to um, subscribe to the updates of that specific piece of uh, data that field so um, this map this map mapper closure is for that purpose and for example here we're just interested in the uh, data field and we just return the data dot uh, which is accounts dot data uh, which is the array of uh, accounts and also the page mapper is where you return the page Page paging related information in the uh, query result. 
as you can see here we just go data dot which is the accounts dot page and also you have to specify a data source update handler which is which will be called whenever a uh, an update is uh, is occurred in the um, uh, related to the specific field you're interested in for example uh, here what we were going to do is once there is an update uh, we reload the table view and then we check if there's any more pages if not we're we will uh, stop the spinner and then after initiate it we, we will call uh, data source dot refresh to get the first page uh, this is the end of the build load and also here um, in the data you have UI table view data source uh, delegate methods. We will make use of the data source method to number of sections and to return data source dot number of rows in the sessions. And also here, um, we will need to um, so so here we're going to uh, get the actual uh, account um, element in the accounts uh, array so let's go ahead do it which is the account query we have to specify the type of it because it's strongly typed already um, data yes and go to data source uh, data source dot item for index pass index pass here and now we want to um, send the data uh, like to get the data and then uh, pass it to the UI so display it in the text label for example data dot. and then you can see here uh, as it's already defined uh, declared in the class uh, query uh, reaches the account query class we can see um, we have a address field so display the address here and then we have a detailed label and then we assign the data dot balance here and then you will see there's an arrow here because the balance is actually an int type so you can assign int type directly to a, um, a text label. So we need to change it to string, convert it to the string, and then that's it. Now let's go ahead and run the demo. See here. See. Um, so the title is the address of the richest account and then uh, the subtitle is the uh, balance they have and let's go ahead and scroll see what happened um, let's try again scroll oh, okay so the reason why it doesn't load the next page is that we haven't called the load more part yet so as you can see here in the delegate method we need to implement it it's the scroll view UI scroll view delegate method so when this when you, when the user scrolls to the end of the the, the page, uh, we will call the load more uh, method of the data source. And let's go ahead and see. Yes, and then after we scroll, we will continue to load more pages, and. And these data 
are actually um, cached so when user get offline they can still see it and the API only um, lists a uh, hundred of the richest accounts top 100 of them so if we scroll to the end um, the spinner disappear and these page and related uh, logic are all handled by the page array data source and that's it <sighs> hopefully um, this tutorial will help you to get a better understanding of how you can work with the Argo iOS SDK and um, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also uh, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, whatever. And again, thanks for watching. Um, until next time, we're out. Peace.